Oh, hello everyone. Welcome to the Economox Garage. Come on in. Well, thanks for joining me for this uh, episode. The goal is to get the gearbox mated up to the engine, get the starter on it, and get those items and along with the drive shaft installed um, into the car. One thing I'll be doing is installing the, the drive shaft at the same time as I put the engine and gearbox in. Reason being for that is the tail of the gearbox here is inside the tunnel. It's a bit of a challenge to get that end of the drive shaft mated up. To the tail of the gearbox. So one of the ways to do that is to have this actually hooked up to the gearbox when you slide everything in. So first off I'm going to dig up the bolts, uh, hold the gearbox and engine together, get them cleaned up, and then we'll get started on putting the two together. Here are the transmission bolts and the back plate bolts. I don't need those because I've already got the new one on there. Um, and then I have the starter bolts here. I'll get those cleaned up and then I can start putting things together. And I've also got the bolts cleaned up and I think I'm missing a couple but they may be even with the exhaust hardware because there is a bracket that mounts uh, right down here. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Now before I attempt to put the gearbox back on, I have an old gearbox input shaft that I'm going to double check the alignment of the clutch disc itself. So theoretically this should go in and slide nicely into place. That way I know that the pilot bushing and the end of the crankshaft and the clutch disc itself, which is sandwiched in here, are in the right position relative to one another. And theoretically, that means when I go to put this in, there's the end of the uh, input shaft on the gearbox that will slide right into place as will the splines in the clutch. So let's give that a try. So another thing that's, uh, that helps locate the transmission on the back of the, the engine is this dowel pin right here. And that corresponds with the hole at the top of the gearbox here. So theoretically, now that the disc is aligned properly with the end of the crankshaft, this should slide straight on without any issues. I'm just going to run one of these bolts in quick, get it started. I'll hold that on. I've just got to cut this uh, zip tie off here that holds the remote clutch bleed set up on here. So I thought of it beforehand. So there I have the gearbox bolted up and the starter motor bolted up as well. I went back to some old photos and to make sure that I had this installed this, the same way that it came out. You can see I've installed a kit to convert from the canister style oil filter to a spin-on and, uh, and that's a Moss Motors part and I'll put a link in the description below to that. Yeah, so now that I've got this all together, I do have to check for more bolts along the bottom, but I'll do that once I've got the block up 
I've got this whole assembly up on the engine crane. And in the meantime, I'm going to get to work on the engine mounts themselves. Now here's the transmission mount. Um, I still have the bolts in it. Those will come out before I slide it in, of course. Uh, these ones go in from the side of the transmission tunnel from the inside of the cabin. And then these longer bolts, there's two of them. They go up through the floor through the reinforcing beam that goes across the entire width of the car and into the gearbox. Well, here are the engine mount assemblies, and this is the mount itself. These two bolts go into the front plate on the engine. Uh, this one goes through uh, these two holes here. These are the brackets. This is the one for the right-hand side of the car. This is the one for the left-hand side. These are new motor mounts that I got actually from rockauto.com. Uh, a little surprised to see they had it on there. got them a while ago, so I don't know if they're still available there. I uh, decided to go with all new hardware. Uh, these bolts are probably a little bit longer than what's specified, but there's plenty of room on the other side. All grade 8 zinc bolts uh, with the zinc plated washers to go along with them. Now before I go and put these bolts in, they go in these holes right here. There's the three holes, one, two, three. I'm going to run a tap down those to clean up any paint and garbage in there. I'll get that done first. I'll come back and then show you a couple of tricks that I've learned of, and how to set up the mounts up to make the engine install a little easier. All right, so what I'm going to do uh, to get the engine back in the car is I'm going to bolt both of the mounts to the front plate and they go in, they go in like that. So I'll bolt, bolt those on loosely. And on the this side, of the, on the, the right-hand side of the engine, I'm also going to mount the bracket so that uh, that can just slide down. I won't be doing that on the left-hand side of the car because if you can, you won't be able to drop the engine down past the steering column here if this isn't actually mounted on the engine. So the general plan here is to loosely bolt this into place and this will be bolted to the engine so this will be able to slide down and get this bolt here into that hole here, but I'll leave everything loosely mounted so I've got some wiggle room. And then you can see just at the, the back here in the, the tunnel, there's the two bolt holes where they'll come up from the bottom. And then you can just see, there's you can see a big opening. And then just below that, there's a little hole. That's one of the bolt holes that come in from the side and then was on one on the corresponding side as well. So let's get these motor mounts installed on the engine. So here you can see I've got the left side mount installed and it's uh, it's in here loose so there's still some room for movement there. I'm going to have to do some adjustments on this fuel line at some point because it's uh, it's going to uh, interfere here so I might just cut it back uh, somewhere along here and hook the rubber line down here and bring it up to the carbs from, from that but I'll, <clears throat> I'll get to that a bit later. Okay, so motor mount uh, loosely in place on the left-hand side of the engine. And on the right-hand side. So next up, I am going to remove the shift lever uh, from the back of the gearbox, because that won't fit down the tunnel with that in place. And then um, I will put on these, uh, these uh, mounting hooks. And they mount on these bolts here. So I'll undo those, pull off the valve cover, mount those two on, get the engine crane set up, and start to swing the engine into place.
I mentioned earlier in the video um, about pre-installing the drive shaft on the end of the gearbox. What I'm going to do, rather than having that kind of waggle around and uh, get in the way for the initial bit of work, um, I've actually just placed the drive shaft, you can see the end of it there, in the tunnel. So once I get the gearbox a little closer in, I'll just pop underneath and then slide that uh, into position on the gearbox. So far, so good. Um, I've got it pretty much over the steering rack here. I've got the tail shaft of the gearbox kind of underneath the battery tray. I'm going to pop underneath now and slide that uh, the end of the drive shaft into the end of the gearbox, and that'll just push out the other end as we, we go in here. see the transmission or the gearbox still has a ways to come back but I do have the end of the drive shaft into the end of the gearbox and now I can slide the, the rest of the way back Well, I've just realized that I have the engine mount brackets on the wrong side of the car. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jack the engine up enough that I can switch these uh, brackets out and then flip them side for side and then they'll be in the, the right orientation. Okay, so I've got the bracket uh, switched around side to side. It also means I have to turn these ones over as well because you'll see there's a little um, tab or uh, dowel here. And that goes into, there's the bolt hole, and then there's the hole this little tab goes in or dowel goes in. So I'll get this other mount uh, loosely in place, and then I'll be able to drop the engine the rest of the way. Now with the brackets installed the right way, things went in a lot better. One other giveaway uh, should have been uh, this little notch in the bracket. It's there to clear the steering column. Of course, there's no steering column on the right-hand side on this car, as it's a left-hand drive. But you can see here the steering shaft or steering column uh, just clears that uh, little nut cut out there. I'm not going to tighten these up just yet. I've got to get the four bolts into the transmission mount. Now two of those go in and one on each side here. So I'm going to have to do some uh, jiggling around to get those holes to line up. Uh, they're very close as you, I don't know if you can see that, it's pretty dark. Uh, but with a little bit of uh, encouragement. I'm sure I can get those to line up. Uh, so I'll get those to line up and then the ones, there's the two longer bolts that go in from the bottom. Well, I have the two bolts on from inside. They just need to be snugged up and it's kind of dark under here but uh, there's the two bolts going into the bottom of that mount. So I've just got to tighten those up. Once I've got the, those transmission ones tightened up, I can tighten up the, the actual engine mounts themselves. Also, there we have the engine and gearbox all bolted in. Um, I've got the motor mounts um, in the correct way and all bolted up. The transmission mounts all bolted up. And just for fun, I put the air cleaners back on. Like this, this is a major milestone, so I, I'm, again, we're very excited uh, for the next steps. So those next steps are to get the drive shaft bolted up to the differential. I'm going to get the, this is the line for, to the clutch slave cylinder. And then I can start putting the wiring harness in. I can get the distributor in, generator mounted, the oil pressure line uh, hooked up that goes into here. Uh, but that's all stuff for future video. Well, that's a wrap for this week and I'm very pleased with the progress. I met my goal of getting the engine and gearbox mated together and back in the car. So regardless of all the work that still has to be done, uh, this was a huge milestone for me in the project. 
If you enjoyed the video, please share it with your friends. Hit the like button, and if you haven't already done so, please hit that subscribe button, and don't forget the little bell icon. Click on that, and you'll get notified when the next videos come out. My name is Ian, this is the Econobox Garage, we'll see you next time!